Arise, shine. What wonderful words we hear at the beginning of our reading from Isaiah chapter 60, but they remind me of a classic song from my childhood, and probably yours too. If you'd like to sing it with me, I would love for you and Jim, even you behind the camera, to sing it with me. But you've got to hold your finger up first. Because this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's a new day. And the sun is shining. It's a new year full of new opportunity. Rise and shine, like my parents used to say. We've begun this new year with such, with such optimism, such, such hope. We all know it was just a, a change of the calendar, but, but still, there's hopefulness in new things, in new years. We all knew it was just a matter of remembering to write a one instead of a zero, but still, could it be that the newness, that the newness of a new year was enough to change all the old crud of the past year? With the dropping of a, a giant glass glowing ball, the, the clock striking 12, the, the champagne cork popping, we, at some level, felt a little brighter. That the new morning sun of that, that next day just might, in fact, change all the depression, the anxiety, the worry, the isolation, and fear of the year that we put behind us. That the simple newness of this New Year might just bring us a little bit more hope, a little bit more joy, a little bit more opportunity, a little bit more optimism, a little bit more light. It seems that way, and it seemed that way when the clock, when the clock struck midnight. As we awoke that first day of that first new year of 2021, but then the second week of 2021 happened. Came around that, that Wednesday that we referred to earlier, or for maybe it was you, it was sooner than Wednesday, and it was then that we realized that life hadn't really changed all that much. That, that little light of mine that little hopeful ember, that, that little coal of optimism, that, that tiny little spark of cheer was, was drowned and doused and, and buried by a dose of hard reality. We were plunged back into darkness, that darkness that we thought we left behind. And I realized this morning, if you're anything like me, that you could use a little bit more of that light. On a side note, though, I did purchase a GoPro. Yep, I, I don't really have need for a GoPro, but I, I bought it anyway. I stumbled across a deal for this GoPro Hero 7 online during the past year, and so I decided to purchase it. Why do you tell me, why do, why, uh, do I tell you this? Well, um, it's because I've found over the past year that I'm a stress buyer, uh, that when I'm stressed or anxious or feeling down, I, I buy things, um, and, I, and I admit that. I, I tend to buy uh, new things I don't really need uh, just to bring a little bit more excitement and joy and fun or a little bit of more light to my life. Now, you may be thinking, Pastor, there's, there's no problem in that. There's no harm in buying something for yourself, a new toy or gadget, something fun. And I, and I would agree. 
buying this GoPro is not wrong. And it it surely uh, didn't cause me financial hardship. I had the money. I didn't have to take out a loan to buy something that I didn't really need. So I bought a GoPro to bring me a little bit more light. And it did. It did. It was fun to use. Uh, but, but back to the problem at, at hand, <laughs> the darkness, uh, that, that lack of light that many of us are feeling right now. Uh, the problem we're all facing at some level is that poetic darkness that we've existed in, that we exist in. And even though Isaiah may use it poetically in this way, he says this, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness covers the peoples. He knows the poetic darkness comes in so many real non-poetic forms. Some might experience that poetic darkness in the very real reality of depression which slowly rears its dark face, and when it does, joy evades us. It evades us in our work, in in our school, in our our hobbies, even in in our families. Some might experience that poetic darkness in the very real reality of anxiety, which violently attacks you as you just try to control or understand just one thing in the midst of a reality that's completely chaotic and uncontrollable. There are many real names for this darkness. You could call it addiction or or loneliness or, or anger and hostility or failed relationships or poverty or homelessness or joblessness or regret and shame, fear, or even our favorite three letter word, sin. And while that poetic darkness Isaiah speaks of comes in many different forms from all of us, I'm sure we can all agree on one thing, that it's a scary place. And even more, we could all agree that we could all use just a little bit more light right now. Speaking about light, though, I've learned something about GoPros. Over the past few months of of trying to figure out this new toy. Uh, The thing is, GoPros don't work well in low light. In the early morning or in a dark room, the image that this produces is grainy. It's it's noisy and and not so clear. They don't do well when there isn't an, an outside light source brightening up the scene and interestingly enough, That's the same reality for you and for me. We don't do well in the darkness either. The darkness causes us to dive deeper into our joyless work. It causes us to put too much pressure on our significant others and our children to fill the voids that we feel in other areas. It causes us to retreat even deeper into ourselves, becoming even more isolated and fearful. In the midst of the darkness, the depression, anxiety, anger, hostility, fear, sin, struggle to find just a little bit of light. In the midst of that darkness, don't do so well. Isaiah poetically puts it this way. In the previous chapter, Isaiah 59, verses 9 to 10, the chapter just before our reading for today, he says this, we look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. It's at this point 
that that song, this little light of mine, gets a whole lot harder to sing because it ain't shining so bright. The darkness, the, the thick darkness seems too dark for the little bit of light that I've tried to generate. For the little bit of effort I've put in to look for some light. I think we could all agree, right, Pastor Nick? That we could all use a little bit more light. The people of, of Israel knew this all too well, this, this lack of light, this, this darkness, because in chapter 59 in the book of Isaiah, it stands as a reminder for the people of Israel and for us of how dark things actually are. Uh, the, the Israelites had been led astray by different pagan cultures from the God who had delivered them from Egypt. Uh, they began to, to worship those, those other gods and desired to be like those other nations. They put their trust in themselves rather than in God who gave them the promised land. They found themselves conquered, scattered, isolated, oppressed, weak. And Isaiah bluntly puts it, dead. They were a dead people without a home, without a community, without any light. So this GoPro, this stress purchase, this attempt at a, at a little bit of light, in fact, needs light just like me. It needs light just like you. It needs light just like the people of Israel needed light. But not just a little light. A little light won't do. It, like you and me and the people of Israel, need a whole heck of a lot of light. And God sees that. He sees that we need it. Not only light, but He also knows that we need life. We need more than just the ability to see because if we just had the ability to see, it would reveal the sad and sorry condition we need to be raised from. We need to be restored and healed. And we, we need to be recreated. Sometimes in the, in the midst of, of darkness, things seem impossible for us. And yes, they are in the dark. But it is in no way impossible for our God. Isaiah would start chapter 59 like this, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear, but our iniquities have made a separation between us and him, and our sins have hidden his face from us so that he does not hear. We may think that the darkness covers way too much that we're too lost in the darkness for God to rescue, heal, restore, or raise us from the dead. But listen again to the words of Isaiah. The saving, restoring, healing hand of your God is not shortened by the darkness. That it can't save you. That the darkness isn't too covering that he can't hear you. Your sin, your darkness, has not put you out of the reach of God. But this GoPro, I like this GoPro. It's been fun. It was fun while I used it. But when I don't use it, it just sits there. And that's the thing about these sources of light that we try to find in this world apart from our God they only bring us light if we put in the effort to make them work. Light only comes from our work if we actually work. Light only comes from our families when we're actively participating in our families. Light only comes from our hobbies when we continue those hobbies. And when we stop trying, when we stop working, when we stop putting in the effort, when we give up, the light 
quickly goes out. And we're plunged into a deeper darkness. But unlike this GoPro, unlike your career, unlike your, the, the effort you put towards in your family, unlike your hobbies, God doesn't just sit there. He continues to work. He reaches down to you. He comes to us, but not in a poetic spirituality, intellectual way. He comes to us in a very real flesh and blood way. He promises to, not only for the people of Israel, but also for you and for me. At the end of that long chapter 59, of all the darkness we experience, God ends it, Isaiah ends it like this, a Redeemer will come. A real flesh and blood Savior will come for my people, says your God. He reaches down to us in His Son, God made flesh, born of a virgin for all people. Jesus puts meat on the bones of God's promises for you today. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Not a generated light, not a worked for light, not a purchased light, not, a, not an earned light, but a given one a delivered one, a little gospel light for me and for you, a little gospel light that, that brought not royal kings but nomadic magicians from a distant land, a little gospel light that Mary treasured up in her heart, a little gospel light that increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, a little gospel light that rose upon the darkness that covered all the earth. God knew we needed a little bit of light, but not just a little light. He knows you and I and the people of Israel needed a whole heck of a lot of light. God knows the depth of the darkness that covers us, so he sends Jesus to us, a light that shines in the darkness and whom the darkness cannot overcome. Jesus, the true light, which gives light to everyone who gives light to you And me, who brings light into the darkness of our depression, revealing the joy he has for us, even in the midst of our joylessness. A Jesus who who is the light in in the darkness of our anxiety, showing us in the very real ways that we can come that he came that he came to calm and to control the chaos that we can't. When he calms a sea and he heals the sick and he raises the dead. Jesus is the light in the midst of our addiction, loneliness, anger, hostility, failed relationships, poverty, regret and shame, homelessness, joblessness, fear, and even in the midst of our sin. Oop, there's my GoPro. He's our bright, shining light as He daily forgives our sins, as He provides you and me with a family called the church. That is held together not by us, but by himself, who gives you his only his Holy Spirit in the midst of your loneliness, that draws you closer to him when you don't have the strength to, who gives you eternal riches of heaven and, and a church who is who is called to care for you in your time of need, who wipes away the regret and shame with the sound of hammers and nails that pierce his hand calms your fear by, by showing you his power to heal the sick and raise the dead, who, who gives himself, covers himself with all of your sin, takes it all from you and buries it with him in his death, a light that isn't even consumed by the darkness of that death, as he shows in that triumphant act as he walks forth from the tomb, that darkness can't contain the physical light of Jesus. Jesus, the true light, which gives sight to and light to everyone, to the shepherds and Mary and Joseph, to wandering magi and to you and me. It's here that I'm confronted with with another problem, that in fact, that, that song that we sang together earlier, that song that many of us love, has gotten it all wrong. 
And I sincerely apologize to all the faithful and dedicated Sunday school teachers who have led me and you in singing that song over the years. The fact is that this light, this light of Jesus, this light made flesh, this gospel light that we have been bathed in is neither little nor mine. In fact, this little light is not little at all. It's marvelously bright. And it's not just mine. It's miraculously everyone's. One more thing about this camera. When it's bathed in light, when the scene and shot are not covered in darkness, it takes a pretty good picture. <laughs> 4K, actually. (laughs) And that's what we do. We reflect the bright light of Christ in the darkness of our world, forgiving freely even those we think are unforgivable, loving unconditionally even those we think are unlovable, serving all people even those who we don't think deserve it, and sharing this light even with those who we don't think will hear it. Why? Because this forgiving, restoring, recreating, healing light is neither small, nor is it only mine or yours. This is what we'll do over the next few weeks. We'll be reminded of this light This light that has come into the world in the person of Jesus. We'll explore in the book of Mark how the light of God has come in the person of Jesus and how that poetic light that Isaiah talked about has manifested itself in real reality for all people. We'll take each week and you and I and Pastor Nick will bask in the light that Jesus brings. There's one more thing, and I promise it's the last thing, and it's not actually about this GoPro. It's about those words in our reading. Rise, shine. If you hear these words as things God is doing for you and through you today, then you're right, they are. He has given you new life in your baptism. He has restored, healed, and calmed, and recreated you through the power of His Word. I hope you hear them. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you believe them. Because there will be uh, waves of darkness in this life. We will still experience the not yet fully restored creation of God, but there is a day coming, a wonderful day, a joyous day, a glorious day, a day when you will hear again these words, arise, shine, for your light has come. And on that day, the darkness of death will be no more, and your lifeless body will begin to live again. When Jesus says to you, arise, shine, In the name and for the sake of Jesus, amen.